Hey guys, so what you'll need is a spandex cap. I use the dome cap from Annie. You can get that from your beauty supply store. Some thread, a curved needle, some scissors, and you're gonna need some tape to tape down the spandex cap. So that way it doesn't move when you start. So I'm gonna take the spandex cap and I'm gonna get one of these foam mannequins that I bought from the beauty supply store. I think it was only about $5. And I just secured that onto my head. So. I've made enough of these to know, you know, exactly where the wig should be for my head, but you'll want to measure your head. Um, you can Google how to measure <laughs> your head and get your measurements, but that's what you'll want to do to ensure that you get the right size. So this looks about right. This is normally, you know, where I put my wig um, cap so that way it fits my head. I'm just going to adjust it. So I'm going to add some tape just a little bit to make sure that it doesn't move um, while I'm sewing the hair down. So I'm going to do some, a few strips around. You don't have to completely, you know, wrap <laughs> the cap up in tape, but you definitely want to make sure that it's secure. So I'm going to do four strips, um, one in the front, one in the back, and then two on the sides. This is what it'll look like um, if you do it my way, but you can always <laughs> do it your way, of course. So what I'm going to do to start off is I start from the back and I just thread my needle. I do about an arm's length of thread, so that way I don't have to keep on threading that needle, you know, a million times. <laughs> I get it just long enough, but not too long, because the longer it is, the, you know, the higher chance you get for tangling. So to create a naturally layered effect, I'm going to use the longest weft at the bottom and work my way to the shortest weft at the top. So I'm going to stick the needle through the cap and then stick that needle through the weft to start. That's just going to secure it down um, and then I'm going to loop the needle around the additional weft until I reach the other end of the hair. And looping is a pretty good method for me. I don't like to go through it, like I said, because going through the weft um, actually causes a little bit more shedding that I've found. So I'm just going to keep going until I get to the other side, which is about the other ear of the mannequin. Now you're going to have some um, extra cap at the top. What I'm going to do later on is just cut that, cut off the excess, and then I'm going to sew the, the cap back together, but you're not going to see me do that, so I just want to mention that now. And I leave about an inch, or a little bit less than an inch, about half an inch um, from the bottom of the wig cap because I'm going to end up cutting that off. Um, where the tape is secured. But these are just my guidelines. You can literally do it the way you want to do it as long as that hair ends up on the wig cap <laughs> and you're able to sew it down onto your head. Do whatever you feel is right for you. But this is the method that seems to work for me. So when I get to the end, I just um, double tie around that weft and then you'll see me flip the weft over. I don't cut my wefts, um, I just do the flip because, like I said, that cuts down on shedding and there's no reason to cut the wefts I found. That way I can reuse them as many times as I want. So when I do that, 
then I just secure with a double knot right there and then I keep going along and I'm just gonna literally keep on doing this until I get to the other side and then I'm gonna flip again and then keep on going and then flip again until I reach you know midway so through trial and error I found that I like to space out the rows at the bottom and then um, make it a lot tighter at the top. So at the bottom it's about an inch to a half inch space um, in between the rows and then it gets much tighter as I get to the top. It's going to ensure that you can't see any of the tracks and that you utilize as much of the hair as possible. And also I'm so sorry that this quality is so poor. This is literally the only way I can figure out how to do this um, <laughs> because I'm sitting here for hours you know tying this making sure that it looks semi okay for camera so I do apologize for the poor quality of it I know it sucks but mm, I hope you can forgive me So this is the end of the first left, which is the longest left, and as I get to the end, I sew through the weft at the very end, do a double knot, and that secures it right down um, so that way you don't have any unraveling. So you should have something similar to this. Um, the bottom row, I leave about half an inch gap between the wefts, only because, you know, you're not going to need them so close together. Um, but at the top, you're definitely going to want to make sure that your wefts are a little bit closer together. Um, and what I mean by that is your rows. You're going to want your rows closer together, so that way you can't see any tracks. Um, they cover each other well. So when I get to the top, I'm going to start to create that U. So I'm going to work with the with the shape of the head basically and I'm gonna follow the natural curve that the head has and that's what's gonna create that nice U for me um, so I'm just gonna go along and I'm just following the row underneath so that way they're really nice and tight together at the top now you don't want to get you don't want to overlap and get them too close together because uh, you're gonna run out of hair but once you get to the very top, so you can kind of see that U that I've created just by following the natural curvature of the head. So I'm going to keep on going until I leave about two inches in between um, because then that's the area I'm going to cut out and that's going to be my U. Now like I said, everyone's U part wig is going to be different. Um, just customize it to your style to what you want it to look like so if you want your you to be a little bit deeper you're going to have a longer you basically and if you want it to be smaller then your you is going to be a lot smaller um, it just depends on how much leave out you want to leave out basically but at the end you're going to end up cutting out that spandex in between and you can always, um, because the spandex cap is so stretchy, it gives you a little leeway so you can move it in closer, you can move it farther away um, when it comes time to braiding your hair and sewing it down. So this is the completed U-part wig. Now I took some of the excess hair that didn't fit on the U and I just um, sewed that down the perimeter of the hair. Um, that's just going to add a little bit more fullness. So you can see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to end up cutting out that extra fabric in between with some scissors. Now you want to be very careful not to cut any of the threads because that's just going to unravel everything <laughs> and that's going to ruin all of your hard work. So um, just be very careful and look at what you're doing. Take it slow. There's no reason to rush this part at all. So I cut all of that. Now I'm going to cut off that extra little uh, perimeter that I have and then you can see um, the final result. So you get this really nice U, and what you're gonna wanna do is just braid your hair up and leave a U um, with some leave out, 
and then you're going to sew that down. You can sew it down the perimeter. You can leave some of your hair out of the perimeter so that way you can do um, high ponytails and such. Well, I hope this was super simple to follow along. Um, you can always customize it and make it your own. I have a coupon code from this hair from DQ Hair Shop. It's the Eurasian Body Wave. So I'll leave the coupon code in the description bar. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, guys. Bye!